Harry Potter suffered great loss at the hands of Lord Voldemort after his return to power. However, upon his return, he witnessed the death of Cedric Diggory firsthand under Voldemort's orders, something that had a lasting and deeply negative effect on him. The question is, why did Cedric's death have such a significant impact on Harry? Let's take a look in today's video. Harry Potter's fourth year at Hogwarts was different from his previous years because of several reasons. For starters, we know he'd already encountered Lord Voldemort more than once, fighting him off in his first year where poor old Professor Quirrell got turned into a sand castle and a year later in his second year defeating the memory of Tom Riddle who came extremely close to gaining full human form. It certainly strengthened Harry's character, especially with what was to come the following year discovering the truth of what really happened to his parents from Peter Pettigrew's betrayal while also reconnecting with Godfather Sirius Black. So for his age, Harry had been through a lot. He thought he had experienced the worst up until that point and I think we've got to hand it to him, he'd come through it all a much stronger person as I've mentioned. Harry knew that the Dark Lord was doing everything possible to return to power despite previous failed attempts. He felt his scar burn more painfully and more frequent, which was a warning signal to him to expect the worst and more importantly, to be prepared. During the year, as he and Cedric were both chosen Hogwarts champions, although Harry undeservedly, they had aided each other in preparation for tasks, like in the case of the dragons and also the egg. Harry was jealous and rather hurt to see Cedric take Cho Chang to the Yule Ball and furthermore begin dating her afterward. Cedric had done enough to draw out an emotional response from Harry, even though Harry had no malicious intent to act on those jealous feelings. Despite this, he still had an underlying respect for him as Cedric's ability was earned from continued practice and applying himself thoroughly. In the maze, Harry could have taken the Triwizard Cup himself. However, he aided Cedric twice when he didn't have to, the first time being from Victor Crumb's Cruciatus Curse, and the second was when they both teamed up to take down the Acromantula that had attacked Cedric first. Harry valued Cedric's life and safety. Regardless of the dangerous and life-threatening situations he'd faced since his very first year, Harry had not yet witnessed death. He hadn't seen anyone be killed, injured yes, but not killed. Now, I know there will be a flood of comments saying, but wait, Harry seen his mother be killed. Harry was just one year old at the time. He did not understand what death was, therefore it had no significant impact on him. Furthermore, he had no memory of it either. So come on guys, let's be realistic. Harry did not understand what death was when Lily was killed before his eyes. Cedric's death was the first event to hit home with Harry that things were only going to get worse. Cedric's death marked the Dark Lord's return, and what's so tragic is the fact that Cedric's death meant so little to Lord Voldemort and was so unnecessary. The Dark Lord, be it as cruel, heartless and evil as he was, always did value a worthy opponent. It's why the line, kill the spare, is so fitting to the situation and it's something that greatly affected Harry going forward. Spare. Cedric was just a spare. Valueless. Nothing but a side obstacle, no immediate threat but not worth the time to deal with, and Harry felt that more than anyone. Along with the Ministry cover-up claiming it was a tragic accident, it really did appear that Cedric did die in vain, for the next year at least, until the truth was finally revealed. In addition to that, Harry insisted that they take the cup together, which added further weight upon his shoulders. The guilt he felt was such a burden at such a young age, and sadly for him, Cedric simply ended up in the wrong place at the wrong time, and it's so clear to the reader that it wasn't Harry's fault. But how many of us have felt guilt or assumed the blame for something we have felt responsible for? Not because we caused it, but because we could have done something to prevent it. Cedric's murder hardened Harry, in a way it opened his eyes to the fact that people were going to die, something that Harry quickly realised was now an extremely high probability. 
Even the year following Cedric's death, he couldn't escape it. Not only was he branded a liar to the wizarding community, the inner frustration at what he must have felt at not only wanting to clear his own name, but as I've said, feeling utterly helpless at the fact that Cedric's death was just covered up. Then Harry's feelings for Cho Chang also never went away. He liked her before and after Cedric and I think many of us don't realise just how important Cho was to Cedric. After all, she was his person of personal value in the second task of the Triwizard Tournament. So it's understandable that despite attempts to make a relationship work between the two, Harry still felt the underlying guilt of Cedric's death enough that he always was going to be reminded of it when he was around Cho. In addition to her repeatedly wanting to talk about Cedric and what had happened. So therefore I think that Cedric Diggory's death under Voldemort's orders really affected Harry a lot more than it appears. And yes, I do agree that Harry losing Sirius, Fred, Remus and Tonks and so many others he cared deeply for, a lot more than he did for Cedric actually, were very painful for him. But the events in the Little Hangleton graveyard left Harry with a burden, an underlying guilt as I've said, a demon. Something Harry would not be a stranger to in terms of experiencing again and holding on to for life. And that is all for today's video everyone, thank you so much for watching, please consider subscribing to the channel if it is your first time watching, and if you're a fan of the channel and feel like you'd like to contribute, my restructured Patreon account is up and running, and in exchange for your contribution of a minimum of $1 a month, there are many rewards you can receive, like suggesting one of my upcoming videos, exclusive Patreon only videos for you to watch and even one to one Skype calls where we can hang out and talk everything Harry Potter or anything in general. So please make sure to check out some of my other videos on the left hand side of the screen. My second channel Game of Thrones lore is on the right hand side of the screen. And if you want to check out some merch, I've got a merch store on the bottom right or you can click the link in the description below. Thanks again everyone and I hope you all have a great day.